Hello everyone. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different for me today. This is not a new idea at all. It's a book recommendation video. I did not coin that term. Um, but I haven't done one of these yet on my baby channel and um, next month, February, is LGBTQ plus history month and I thought it would be nice to pop on here slightly in advance of that month with some book recommendations uh, that you may want to pick up uh, to honour that month. So um, I basically just have a stack of books here that I'm going to talk to you about um, and some that I don't have in physical copies either because uh, I've lent them out or because I haven't read them yet or because I listened to them on audio or had them on an e-reader. Now what I have done for this, I had the idea to do this video um, not much brain. So I had um, I had the idea to do this video not very long ago. So um, what I haven't done is googled lists and just regurgitated them. I thought um, it might be fun to see what I could just pull off my shelves or remember having um, read or things that are maybe on my TBR. Um, I haven't read all of these books um, and talk to you about them. And the only concession I made, so I played a game with myself where I was like, I'm not allowed to Google like good books to read in this month because you can do that yourself if you want a googleable list um but i did employ um the queer network of my book club uh, and ask them for any recommendations so most of these are mine and if it is not my recommendation i will state that it is not my recommendation um and that it belongs to somebody else so i thought we'd kind of kick off in a few parts so i'm gonna do I'm going to start with like outright non-fiction, like history books that are about queer issues. Um, this is not a main area that I read. I don't read as much non-fiction as I do fiction. Um, and I don't really read a lot of history because I find it quite difficult for Hannah Lost the Plot to um, deal with non-fiction history books. But I do have a few um, and I have a list here. If you see me looking down here, it's because I'm checking my list because I don't want to forget anything. Um, so I'm going to start with like some straight up history books um, and that is, uh, the first one is Female Husbands, um, A Trans History by Jen Mannion. This is a book that I included I think in one of my first wrap ups which I will link um, down below. This is, as it sounds, um, a history of uh, people who were assigned female at birth uh, becoming husbands um, throughout history. It was really interesting. I had some structural issues with it. Um, it kind of goes person by person through history, um, but there were some commonalities in the stories that meant that the book itself ended up feeling a little bit repetitive. Um, but that was like, I'm a, I'm a thematic person, so I would have preferred it to be thematic, but I think um, other people might not feel the same way and that it was really well researched and, and really really interesting um some of the people in that book obviously th these are people from history so we don't know now how they would identify in our current kind of um vernacular for talking about gender but there were definitely seemed to be some people in that uh kind of anthology of of biographies that were what we would consider to be trans today but there were also some women I think who ended up adopting masculine dress just so that they could be in a same-sex relationship with uh, another woman so it was really interesting do you recommend it um the second kind of outright history book is another one that I listen I listened to that on audio by the way as I did this one which is the pink line um the world's queer frontiers by Mark Gefferson Gefferson should have checked that. Um, this is a really, really interesting look at the different um, frontiers that are currently being pushed globally in terms of the queer community. And so if you're looking for um, a kind of more global rather than quite Western, the Jen Mannion book is very British and American focused. Uh, this is much more of a global look um, and it's it's from a, a broader kind of, it, it's more of a cross section of the entire queer community. It's very good, it's very in depth, um, but there were some really nice um, parts in it. I think I particularly enjoyed hearing about the uh, 
South Asian South Asian culture has a third gender and have had a third gender for hundreds of years called the Hijra. Um, and that was really interesting to hear that actually um, this idea of uh, being gender non-conforming or being anything outside of the gender binary is something that has existed throughout history. Uh, so that was very good. Recommend that. And then the third non-fiction book is a book I, I haven't actually read yet, but it's on my TBR. I don't know if I'm going to get to it this month because I have a lot of books listed here that I'm probably not going to get to this month. Um, but I consider all months to be queer history months. Um, but this is by, by Julia Shaw, which is um, The Hidden Culture, History and Science. Science? of bisexuality, um, does what it says on the tin, I think. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, to seeing this, but um, bisexuality and kind of any kind of multisexual um, identity are, are more prevalent, um, but kind of tend to be less discussed. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into that. Um, and then the final one is, uh, is a bit, off beast. It is a non-fiction book. It's a true crime book. Uh, don't worry, n nobody queer gets killed. Um, but it's uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Buren. And um, I was just, I, as I was looking back through like books that I read last year to see if there was anything that I think would um, fit in this kind of context, then, um, and and yeah, this, this was one that, um, I kind of like, it's sort of, it sort of fits. Uh, so it, as I said, it's, it's a true crime book. It's, it's set in Savannah in the, oh, I can't even remember, like mid, mid 20th century. So we're not talking like history, history. We're talking kind of more recent history. Um, but I remember there being a trans character in it um, and their story being one of the, most because he, he kind of this writer basically just kind of moves to Savannah and Georgia and uh kind of starts ingratiating himself with like different kind of groups and communities and I remember the um the parts where he was talking to um this trans woman as being particularly kind of human feeling um so I recommend that if like you're not feeling up for like straight up non-fiction. Um, what I also recommend if you're not feeling for straight up non-fiction are kind of memoir and letters and diaries etc. Um, and I have a few here. Um, so obviously there, there will be way more than what I'm discussing here but because of that like limit that I put on myself for like only things that I can think of off the top of my head in about an hour. Um, <laughs> These are the things that I've remembered and I also wanted to apologise because what this exercise has um, taught me is that I do not have nearly enough intersectional stuff on my shelves. I read a lot of um, queer stories. I also read a lot of work, um, but definitely could read more, by writers of colour, but I think they are quite separate spheres on my shelves. So if you have recommendations for this, uh, for LGBTQ plus History Month, from not white or not European perspectives. I would be very interested to hear your recommendations. Um, but I do have a couple for um, kind of more memoir and letters. And the first is a book that if you've been here before, you will have heard me talk about um, because I loved it. And it's The Love Letters Between um, Virginia Woolf and Devita Sackville West. Um, this is a lovely book that you can dip in and out of. I think it is beautifully edited. Um, so Virginia and Vita are both writers, so it's also a treat just because they're both lovely writers writing to each other. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's it's a lovely little snapshot of um, their relationship or series of snapshots of, of their relationship over a number of years and is, yeah, really highly recommended. In a similar vein, this is a book that I haven't read, um, but it is on my TBR on Scribd, which is um, My Own Dear Darling Boy, which is the letters that Oscar Wilde wrote to um, Lord Alfred Douglas. Um, so I think maybe in a similar vein, but I think possibly a bit less reciprocated than, than this. Um, I haven't been able to bring myself to listen to it yet because I don't know I don't know how I feel about the, because I don't know the content of those letters. I sort of don't know how I feel about them being published. Um, but I'm, yeah, it's there if you, if you are interested. Um, 
My friend Evie from my book club also uh, recommended The Diaries of Anne Lister, who you may be familiar with as Gentleman Jack. Um, there was a TV adaptation starring, I think, is it Saran Jones? It was one of those actresses that's just in everything. I'm pretty sure it was Saran Jones. Um, so Evie recommended that, which sounds great. I also recently bought this, which I'm very excited to, um, I will pick this up this month. I might not read the entirety of it. Um, but this is published by Head of Zeus and it is Queer, a collection of LGBTQ writing from ancient times to yesterday. So this is just, um, as it sounds like a, a great anthology of lots of different, it's got poetry, prose, um, nonfiction, uh, from a really diverse um, group of queer writers throughout history. So I think this is a great book for this month. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to digging into that. And then my friend Helen recommended a memoir, which is, um, I guess, more recent history, um, which is Gay Bar, Why We Went Out by Jeremy Atherton Lynn. I do not know that much about it, um, except that when I looked it up, I thought, oh, yeah, that sounds good, but here it is, and uh, check it out if you like. Um, so that brings me on to, like, that's nonfiction done. Now, now I thought, I'm, I'm doing fiction, but it's historical fiction or classics with queer rep in it. So that's what I've, what I've gone for. I am, um, I'm going to rattle through these quite quickly because some of them I've read and some of them I haven't um, and all of them will be Googleable, so you can have a little look um, and see what they're about if you're interested in taking it further. I'm going to start off um, not with a novel but with an absolute classic. Um, if you haven't read Angels in America by Tony Kushner, um, I recommend it. It's a, it's a brilliant play and actually um, I don't know, I know some people don't like reading plays. I actually kind of like reading plays because it gives you the opportunity to um, kind of stage it yourself, which I think is kind of fun. Um, but I know the um, adaptate the the stage adaptation with Andrew Garfield was available for a while on National Theatre's on demand subscription thing. But anyway, um, this again is is more recent queer history, but obviously a big a part of it. This is set during the AIDS epidemic. Um, AIDS epidemic, and um, yes, it's very very good. Um, recommend. Then we have, I mean, we've got a couple here that I was like, a couple of these are, are authors that I think people know are queer, a couple um, maybe surprises, um, and I haven't read all of these, but one I have read is, I mean, it's Virginia Woolf's Orlando, complete with my like Cancer Research £1.50 sticker. Um, this is, um, I, I think, maybe one of the first trans books to be published in um in England it is um yeah it follows a um a character called Orlando who um swaps gender partway through the the play uh, the play the novel um, and I think was the character of Orlando was heavily influenced by Vita Sackville West so um there's a nice kind of maybe you could read those two books Orlando and um the love letters as companion pieces but this is just a dinky little one as most of Virginia Woolf's books are I think Virginia Woolf is an extraordinary beautiful writer and this is a wonderful book um the next one is a book that I have not read um but the author is gay and not he wasn't publicly gay I don't I don't think at the time of his writing and that is um Proust. So I have here volume one, volume one of In Search of Lost Time and I have not been able to start it yet. I am not quite ready. Um, it is a big old dense book. So Swan's Way is about 500 pages. I think there are four volumes. I don't think there is anything explicitly queer in this volume but I know in subsequent volumes of In Search of Lost Time there is queer representation but hey if you want to challenge this month by all means pick this up I don't think I will be but maybe next February um then I have do 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 uh this is Maurice by E.M. Forster this is a uh, another one that I haven't read I have read a lot of E.M. Forster books but this I haven't read and I didn't know 
that this apparently has a, a queer relationship in it. Um, it was only when um, someone mentioned it today and I was like, I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, so Maurice by E.M. Forster. My dog is crying. It's not time yet. He thinks it's his dinner time. It's not his dinner time. It's okay. Um, then in terms of other kind of classics, my friend Evie recommended The Colour Purple by Alice Walker, which I shamefully still haven't read, but um, I know is a book that is very, very beloved. And here is, here is my very hungry dog. Could you just not for a second, kid? No, get down. No, get down. Good boy. Nearly. Okay, I better make this quick. <laughs> so, uh, that was uh, The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. Now this, this is a book that is incredibly beloved to me. I bought this book when I was about 15 from my local library. You know when libraries used to sell books? I bought it for 10 pence. Look at that, 10 pence. Um, and it is I Will Not Serve by a French author called Evelyn Maillet. This was published um, posthumously. Um, Evelyn Maillet uh, took her own life um, in her 30s. And I think this is the only book of hers that was ever published. And it is about a young girl who falls passionately in love with one of her teachers who is a nun. And part of the reason that I love this book so much is this inscription that was in it um, when I bought it. And it says, Darling Sarah, lots of love and warm wishes for a very happy Christmas 87. I've been wanting to buy you this for ages. I read it the year I left home, which was when I just slept with a woman. All very symbolic. It's wonderfully intense. Do tell me what you think of it. Love, Caitlin. And I often find myself thinking about Sarah and Caitlin and what they're doing now. The fact that this was sold by a library makes me think things didn't end beautifully for Sarah and Caitlin, but it's it's a great little book. If you can get your hands on a copy of it, I really recommend it. I mean, I, I read it when I was a teenager and was just like, this is, yes. Um, so I've got that one. Another classic that I haven't read, but really looking forward to is um, James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room. I'm particularly interested in that one because uh, Lewin's just jumped on the bed. So I'm sorry if he knocks this too <laughs> Um, yeah, so Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, um, which yeah, as I said, I'm particularly looking forward to get to looking forward to getting to soon, because I've heard that it's 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 great queer rep in general, but also particularly um, bisexual rep, which I always think is something that is not always done brilliantly, even by writers from within the the queer community. So I'm I'm looking forward to that, and then the last one of the kind of like classics. Again, this is like, this is more of a, con a modern classic um, and Evie recommended this, which is Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown, which shamefully, like I had, I hadn't heard of until Evie um, recommended it in when I was asking about book recommendations for this video. And it came out in the 70s and, and was one of, um, it, it was quite controversial when it came out because of its um, portrayal of lesbianism. And uh, yeah, I definitely want to pick this one up soon because I think it sounds amazing. Um, so then we're kind of moving into more contemporary books that are either historical or are in reference to the past. Um, I'm really playing fast and loose with this whole history thing. I don't read that many history books. Um, but the first one is a book that I haven't read yet, but I do have a physical copy of, and it is After Sappho by Selby Wynne Schwartz. Um, this is, I think, a kind of meditation on the legacy of Sappho. Sappho, um, if you're not familiar, is where we get the word sapphic from in terms of uh, describing... Uh, um, uh, describing female and female relationships, God, brain. Um, and uh, it is, Sappho was a, an ancient Greek poet um, and we know very, very little about who Sappho was. So I think this will, be this will be interesting. I have heard very mixed reviews. I think a lot of people have said that they appreciate what this book was doing, but didn't like love it. And I think that's why I haven't picked it up yet but it is there if you are 
interested in the kind of classics and how they maybe resonate down through society, um, then this may be one for you. Next up is, let me check. Oh, this is a, um, a book recommendation that I saw on Instagram for mixtape a and I thought that sounds interesting and it is uh, a bit of a rogue shout and I don't really think it even counts as historical but it is a queer retelling of a um, classic story and it's called Peter Darling and it's by Austin Chant and it is a queer trans retelling of Peter Pan and I know nothing else about it except it popped up on my timeline and someone said it's a queer trans retelling of Peter Pan and I thought I'm gonna see if I can get that on script and you can if you use script I think the ebook is available um we also have on here do we no no more from the group forgive me so um Lula recommended Sister Song by Lucy Holland which is a reimagining of a um a post-Roman Britain folk folk ballad, um, I think. I, again, I don't know anything about it, but there is the recommendation from uh, from the community. And Lula also recommended, and actually I should have brought up because I have it on my shelf as well and have read it, uh, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which is a queer retelling of um, the Siege of Troy, particularly around the relationship between Achilles and Patroclus, who are presented as lovers in her book. Um, I had mixed feelings about the Song of Achilles, which you can hear about in what video? A Legendathon reading vlog that I did for, for Legendathon, so I will link that down below if you are interested. Um, and then this, uh, How To Be Both by Ali Smith, is um, kind of only part queer historical because it is a book in two parts. It's got a, um, a Renaissance timeline and a contemporary timeline. Um, but the Renaissance, in fact, I think both of the timelines are, are queer, but especially the, the Renaissance one. So if you um, like your historical kind of not super, super historical and kind of enmeshed with contemporary settings, then then this, this is going to be one for you. Um, then we have some classic authors that I haven't read, and I mean kind of more modern classics, um, but... The first author is Patricia Highsmith, who I shamefully still haven't read, and um, this book, Deep Water, which also just a beautiful um, edition with French flaps. And this, as far as I can tell, um, is about a husband and wife who have a very interesting relationship and um, cheat on each other quite a lot. And it's kind of an open secret in their societies. This was written in the um, 50s. Um, or it was first published in the 50s, it might have been written earlier, but no, I think 50s. Um, and the husband, I think, was having an affair with a man who ends up dying and the wife starts joking that her husband killed him. But it's kind of a psychological type thrillery book, I think? I don't, I don't really know, but... Um, it felt right to include, couldn't tell you why, but there we go. Um, and then there is an author who lots of people recommended in um, our group, but particularly uh, Lula recommended, and that is Sarah Waters, who I still haven't read any Sarah Waters despite owning two of her books. Um, Sarah Waters is a queer writer of um, historical fiction and um, I have no excuse for not having read these so far, but I think I'm definitely going to pick one of these up soon. So the two copies that I have are uh, Tipping the Velvet, uh, which is Victorian. Victorian. I think both of these are Victorian, actually. Yeah. Um, and yes, Fingersmith. Um, but both of these have um, queer rep and are historical. So if you are interested in just reading kind of great stories that centre queer characters in a historical setting, then I think these sound like they will be right up your street. Obviously, I haven't read them yet, so I'm reserving the right to change my mind, but I suspect I will really like them. Uh, so that is those. And then, in a similar vein, 
Uh, I'm going to rattle these off because most of these were um, recommendations from the group. So Sarah recommended The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue, which is set during the 1918 flu epidemic, I believe, and has queer rep. Then Evie recommended The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, which is the witch trials, I think, in, in the 1600s. Um, I would also, though this is not a book that I myself loved, um, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan is set in the 1300s in China and has really good queer rep in it. Um, I didn't love the pacing in this and it, it felt like a little bit too edgy on YA for my personal reading taste, but I read it with um, Queer Books Newcastle and most people really, really, really liked it. So I was definitely an outlier. So I'm still including in this wrap up. Um, and then two more, two more. One, again, bit more of a contemporary one. Um, but a book that's been on my TBR for ages is Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo. And I think, but I'm sorry if I'm wrong, I think that this tells the story of a man who has been in love with another man for his entire life, but is married to a woman. But because he's quite old, I think we get quite a lot of kind of recent history stuff in it. I could be so wrong about that, in which case, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, and finally, I felt bad that I didn't have any poetry in here, but I'm not a huge poetry reader and I didn't know what would count as historical. And then I remembered that I have saved on Scribd. Um, there are trans people here by H. Melt. And a lot of these poems are specifically in reference to moments in queer and trans history. So if you are into poetry and um, you want to access some queer history that way, that might be an option. And that's it. This stack of books is gonna fall and my dog is going to knock the camera. Um, I'm sorry if that's been a bit like ranty. I feel like I could have prepared for this better, but I had the idea to do it and very limited time this weekend to actually film this. Um, I was hoping to get it done earlier this afternoon, um, but couldn't. Um, and I've, I've just got in and I need to go and make dinner and I desperately wanted to record it today. Uh, it's, it's, it's Sunday night and I kind of wanted to just get it recorded so that it was not hanging over me over the start of the weekend because I wanted to get it up before the start of February and that was all internal thoughts that you did not necessarily need to know. But never mind. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I would love to hear what your recommendations are. Like I said, I'm I'm sorry that um, that list was not more intersectional and I, I would really prefer that it was if I ever do this video again. So if you have book recommendations for anything to do with LGBTQ plus history, but particularly um, centering uh, the voices of writers of colour or disabled writers or from any other kind of intersectional identity that I haven't mentioned here, that would be very much appreciated and I would love to hear if you are interested in picking up any of these books as a result of me very quickly talking you through them and uh, just generally what you're reading at the moment because I'm nosy. Um, if you have liked this video and you would like to stick around, uh, please do subscribe to my channel, that would be lovely. Um, and you can follow me on various different social media platforms including Storygraph and Instagram and the links for those are in the description box as well. Happy whatever day it is that you're reading this. Um, and uh, yeah, see you soon.